In the mid-1960s, a group of gentlemen led by James West Durst met within their organization, Kiwanis Club, and were talking about their personal collections, what they had, they traveled a lot, they had gathered a lot of things personally, and felt that it was important to share these things with the public. Mr. Durst was encouraged to pursue setting up a museum. The support was there and it began, it opened its doors in 1970 to the public and has been open ever since. The museum includes Greenwood history and regional history, but it's much broader than that. Uh, the second floor exhibits are an international collection. You'll visit the African continent, the Far East, Middle East, Europe, and the Americas. Uh, we consider it a window on the world. Some of the things on the main floor and most exciting for the majority of our visitors are the Main Street rooms, which contain period pieces, not reproductions, from the late 1800s to about 1920. It includes a drug store, a general store, and the schoolroom that we're in now. There's an extensive lock and key collection that goes back to handmade locks from the 1700s. Uh, the natural science collection is phenomenal with rocks and minerals, also taxiderm mounts. And then my favorite piece, personally, is a hand-carved statue of what a Japanese artist believed a Native American would look like, a Native American princess. A recent acquisition is a rooster with 12 and a half foot long tail feathers. And he's in the parlor because if he had been around when Dr. Barrett had made the curiosity cabinet in the parlor, he certainly would have been part of that. The museum, in partnership with the Railroad Historical Center, began opening the trains and gardens uh, at South Main Street about three years ago. There's seven full-size rail cars, starting with the 1906 steam engine. From there, you'll travel on to a electric car, Piedmont and Northern. There's a business car that's beautiful with walnut paneling, a dining car, you can go through the kitchen or also sit at the tables, a sleeper, and a coach. We're an object-based museum. More and more museums are text-based, or you really have to spend time reading panel after panel. We have more objects and less text for you, so it's fun. You're immersed in history. It's just encourage your children to read and then come to the museum and just see what they were talking about in the novels that they were reading or in history books.